you can see we have the depth cam here, the depth coming in. So that noisy texture by my hand is composited over this main feedback loop that's creating like the background. I also wonder if these can be circles, but like when you point your hand a certain way, it sends all the particles out that way. And today I'm going to be working on some interactive artwork. So I'm going to start off by showing you what I've been working on uh, previously with interactive. I've got three interactive artworks. So I'm just going to run through really quickly. I'm just going to um, show you how they work, what they're doing. Um, these are artworks that I've designed based on my generative artworks, but have made them interactive using a depth cam. Uh, technically, you could use any kind of depth cam. I use a Connect V2. I uh, could use the Azure Connect, or I could use uh, Z2i I've used also. So this artwork is called Watercolor Interactive. I'll go through the demo first, and then we'll jump into how it works. So if I just go to the DSLR, you can see I've got a screen up here. You can see at the top of that screen, I have a Connect, um, Connect V2, which is what I'm working with. And I can interact, you can see my hand like this. So, so what's going on here is um, the Connect is using a threshold to grab my hand out of the rest of the image and react to it basically. Um, and it changes colors every time you go in and out. So in and out, it's going to select a new pattern of colors every time that happens. And yeah, so this is what we have happening here. And it goes into this sort of like watercolor simulation. I'm sort of doing this uh, with my um, hand just to show you because it's easier so I can actually talk into the mic and get good audio. The other good thing about this is there's that circle that you can see in the far corner. And so when I put my hand over the circle, it's going to take away pigment from the simulation. So let me show you that. You see it starts sort of like eating away at the simulation with what's going on. And so you can create quite interesting effects. I'll just do a little quick demo with it, show you some of the different movements. It reacts to the full body. So I'll just quickly jump up and demo that. See, yeah, I don't know if my mic can pick up too well, but... Oh, hey, Claude. How's it going? And we can start again. So yeah. All right. So that's the little visual uh, demo of what we've got going on back here in touch designer and we've got i'm gonna select this up to view so you can see what's going on here so you can still see me i'll jump into the patch show you how it's working it's a bit of a mess in here right now but you can see we have the depth cam here the depth coming in and then um and using a chroma key to just grab a certain threshold so um, if you go too close, it disappears too far away because um, so the connect in depth mode, for those of you that don't know. Um, so this is a depth texture. So it's like it shows you what's happening in the room, but then also uh, the lighter a pixel is, the farther away it is. So these darker pixels in my hand 
uh, closer to the screen and then my hand becomes lighter as I go further away from the screen. And that's how you get like the depth of everything in the room. And so, um, so you use a chroma key to set a minimum value and a maximum value. And that means that only uh, pixels a certain distance away from the camera are going to be used in because if I, um, if I got rid of this, you'd have the full image. Like, no, it sort of breaks itself. But yeah, you see like it's reacting to the full, full image. Hey, Hayek, how you doing? We're just working on some uh, interactive things. So if I reset this, you can see how it's going. So maybe I'll just keep this up so you can see what's, what's happening there too. Um, so I do a bunch of like things to, to get this, these, uh, threshold selected area into a color scheme. So if you look at this mat here, you can see that I've like blurred it out, um, and then added colors. So you get colors around the edge of my hand or basically whatever I can put my whole head in to, um, get colors around the edge of the, whatever is in the threshold range. And then those colors change when I go in and out, just like that. So that all goes into my feedback loop, which is a watercolor simulation. I'm not going to really go into the full details here, but we've got just like a feedback loop with a slope. That's what's creating the, the movement outwards of these particle, these particles, uh, these pigments are sort of moving outwards because of the slope. And then um, you're going into a noise, into a curl noise, displacing it by a curl noise. Um, this mat over here is uh, what allows us to take it away. So you start, um, it, this is the, this texture here starts cutting it away when it detects my hand going over there. So there's a little threshold thing here. So when I go, whoa. you can see that little threshold that select is detecting. Um, it's like basically a button that you can operate with, with your hands. And, um, and so the longer that you hold over it, the more um, you get to get rid of the pigment in the feedback loop. This is the first interactive artwork that I ever sort of made. It, um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks and it all works very nicely. People that, who have seen it tend to enjoy <laughs> interacting with it, you know? Yeah. All right. I'm going to open the next one up. I'm going to quit that. Uh, so I'm using the connect V2 connect V2 is what's happening. Um, right now I haven't tried the, I didn't really like the Azure that much. I tried it once. Um, but it wasn't the best in my opinion. Um, I'm pretty happy with the V2 except that it's like a bit annoying technologically. Like I have it at this installation that I did and, um, extending its range is really hard and and those kind of things so yeah all right so this artwork this new one is there we are um this one takes a while to build up so this one's sort of interesting you've got these two brushes and they brush pixels across the screen which is cool um, but then I'll show you when the interaction starts. Um, but yeah, you've still got the connect coming in like usual. Jump into here. I don't know where I'm getting these errors from. All right, that speed is not needed. Um, you've just got the lookup going in. Oh, we drop frames if we go in there. It gets really ugly when it drops frames like that. Um, and then there's a big feedback loop in here. So this is a feedback loop with like lots of displacement. Actually, most of it, God, am I still even running this? 
Oh, yeah, it's still running it. So I, this this little component here is making the frames per second go slower. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't I don't know about wow. It's like it's really messy, is what it is. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Um, okay, so. Now that this is sort of like filled up with enough stuff, I'm going to show you what happens when you interact with it. Actually, I sort of want this black space up here to be filled. Um, anyway, I'm going to switch over to my DSLR. Am I trying to reduce the glow? Let me just shut the window behind me. That's better. There was like a ton of glare on the screen. All right. So I'm going to do the interactive part now. And you, you see, it's all, it's like makes it really glitchy and interesting. So um, let's jump in. So yeah, that's the interactive mode for this one. Um, and so you can see it sort of like glitches things out and there's a whole like, um, like glitch effect that happens, but then also the ripples, like there is a, a, a mini fluid simulation too that's causing um, the ripples to just like propagate. So when when I disturb the surface of it, it's like the the ripples move across. So like if I go in and you can see like the motion vectors keep like moving across the screen and and you get that kind of glitch effect happening. I'll do a little bit more demoing just so you get the idea. I think this one's a lot more well, a lot less obvious in its interaction, but like a bit more elegant if you know what I mean like there's a still like a bit more of an interesting feel to it um, because it's it's still obviously reactive but you can't just like see your outline so I'll do a little quick demo in touch designer too so you can see like what the camera is seeing and then then what you get to see in the end so wait where's my input All right, so here's the chroma key that shows what I'm grabbing from the connect. So I'm going to leave that in the bottom corner. And then this is obviously the the displacement. So so this will give you an idea of like Okay, so what have we got here? Um, so we've got obviously this chroma key effect coming in here. And um, oh yeah, we've got a little fluid simulation. So, so this is a tiny little fluid simulation. I think it's really low resolution actually. I oh, know it's <laughs> 1920 by 1080, okay. But um, if you have a look, what we have here works near range. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the chroma key kind of effect. Wait, what do we got going on here? All right, so 
this is what my little fluid sim does. This is sort of hard to see, so I'll, I'll pull this up. But you have, you have these tiny little bits of fluid that are coming off in the direction that I am like moving my hand. And so like if I move up, it goes up, down, it goes down. And you get these ripples that come off my hand. And they're what I'm using to displace the, the texture in the end. So, so there's that fluid simulation. And then this comes in here. This is sort of confusing to see. But um, yeah, you can see the fluid simulation a bit more clearly here. There's the fluids that come off my hand. And, and you can see they, they move across the screen. Um, and then through a lot of like complex, complex things. Wait, I don't even know how many of these I'm using. All right, I am using this. Um, but this displace, so you get optical flow. So using optical flow based on the ripples. So that's detecting where my hand is going, what it's doing. Um, and so you then use that optical flow and then I down res it a bunch here. So I think, yeah, oh, 1408, that's a weird resolution. Yeah, I eventually make a texture that is 128 by 128 pixels. So a really low res texture. And then that texture is used to displace the feedback loop. You see like that. But then you get the motion vectors like coming off my hands. So yeah, that's the, the second artwork. And I've got one more artwork to show. So let's shut that down. And this is going to be consciousness stuff. So this is an interactive version of my artwork consciousness stuff which is, um, I mean, one of my most successful artworks, my first NFT drop, my highest selling work, whatever. Um, so, so this is a generative version of that. So the background is just that. And then I'll open this up here. That can sit up there. So it just, it's basically when I'm not interacting with it, it's just um, a generative version of my artwork. I'm going to pull this up too. So you can see. And then when I can, I can interact with it, I'll show you with the, I'll switch over to the DSLR. Yeah, it's a good time. This one's a good time. Because I, like really, I really like this one because it just like sort of keeps changing. Um, and so like when you interact with it, it starts a whole new like effect on the background. And then let me just make this a bit bigger. Um, and then when you interact again... like that, you get um, more effects again. So it's like there's this artwork that sort of looks great while it's, um, if I do say so myself, it sort of looks good while it's like just running. And then 
and then you can interact with it and it and it makes like meaningful changes and um and then composites itself over the main artwork so let me do a little quick rundown of how this one works um so if we jump in here once again we've got the connect coming in we've got the chroma key like crab grabbing my hand uh then what i'm doing with that what am I doing with that? I'm, I'm multiplying it by noise. So you've got like really noisy hand and then adding like color in so you can see it here. Um, if I zoom in, so you can see in the corner here, just above my head, um, my hand now becomes like this really noisy texture. And then that ends up, oh, I don't know if that octopus flow actually does anything. Um, but the main part of it is what you're doing is putting that, that, that over, so that noisy texture by my hand is composited over this main feedback loop that's creating like the background. So you see that. And then that goes into my special little device over here called Bleeder, which makes this whole cool effect based on the uh, colors and the motion vectors, and it all gets combined in a super secret special feedback loop in there. Um, but yeah, the basic idea is that you're compositing this noisy interference from my hand over this texture here like that. And then you can sort of see the effect that it has going into the main work. And then you get ha this like generative part happening too, where it's just like generating itself, creating itself, um, and does stuff like that every so often. And it's also interesting because like the background keeps changing. So the way that you interact with it keeps changing too. You keep going and like you can add some blues in some places or lighter colors or darker colors. And you never really know what you're going to be getting with the interaction. So, sorry, I have a bunch of cables. So yeah, those are the three artworks that I currently have worked on, have finished. Um, and so those three are what is going to be the basis for new work. So we're going to jump straight into that. First of all, what I'm going to grab from here, this chroma key, this fit, what is controlling this fit? Um, this chroma key and this fit. I'm going to grab because they have a good range and a good um, a good range of chroma key and a good uh, mapping of because the connect comes as square, right? So like when I get this image, it comes out as a square, and then when my hands come through, they come in the square. So I've got to map it, this onto the screen somehow. And there's certain ways to like stretch that and make it so it lines up. And I've already done that for, you have to basically recalibrate it. Like I, when I install these things on a big LED wall, you have to recalibrate everything uh, to that LED wall because your sensor's in a different spot. The wall's a different shape. You've got to mask out certain areas. Um, and so these ones just happen to be already calibrated to the TV that I have. And so I'm going to use them as a basic... Uh, version for what I'm working on. So let's go into making a new artwork. Going to drop down an input. And 
throw these down. Bring my connect in. Okay, so we need a UV image. Um, a UV map is what we need. And I happen to have one. Where do I have a UV map? I've got UV maps in lots of places. Most obvious one is probably my components, Ben. Uh, UV brush. Yeah, there's probably one in here. So this is what I'm talking about. UV map, this reorder. This is sort of like a cheating way of doing it, but let's go. Uh, I don't know how many particles I'm going to want. So two, five, six by 1440 seems like a good number. Um, so the idea is that we want to get particles emitting from wherever I have my hand in the depth cam setup. I want them to just shoot out in all directions and maybe we like trigger uh, like notes based on when they shoot out. So, so this is a UV texture, zero to one across there and zero to one up zero to one across and zero to one up. Um, we might have to do a bit of math to get this working. Um, but let's just, sh let, let me just show you what I'm going to do. So to, I'm going to make all the particles in tops and then use them to instance SOPs. So first thing we need to do is do the most basic version is to multiply Actually, we might do a mat. Just do a thresh. Uh, I don't know. Let's just do a reorder. Take this. Alpha is going to be every channel. This is basically the same as doing a threshold. And then we're going to multiply these two together. So that multiplied by that it should be 32 bit float yep so now what we have is these are going to be our particles so jump in here and we'll put a null at the end i just want to test how we're mapping because i think we have to remap the x and y positions a little bit because i think they go from They don't really line up properly. So, uh, let's just start off with circles. So we'll do a circle. We'll make it a very basic circle, hardly even a circle. 12, 13, like 14 division, 15 divisions, that, that'll do. And then we go into a geometry. Um, I need a camera. I'm just going to use the constant as the material. And then we need a render for all this. Yeah. Put that back. So obviously this circle is way too big, so we're going to transform it until it's a tiny, tiny little point. So the scale is going to come right, 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 right the way down. Even smaller than that. Like It's a good size. Let's make this 1080. Then we're just going to do an over. Actually, let's, let's leave that for now. Uh, let's turn our instancing on. Instance on. This is going to be our translate up. So we've got X and Y is R and G. Boom, we're like right down to zero. 
Ouch. Active can be a... Why so slow? It's seeing some points that I want to... Alright. So just to make the rendering uh, more efficient, we're going to change this to... Because I don't know why it's so slow. Um, but we're going to do point sprites. So we're going to add a point, convert it to a particle. Chuck that in there. And we're right up to 60. All right. And then we should be able to change our material to point sprite. And then, all right, there's our hand. So this is working pretty well for what I want. Obviously, I don't want that bunch of things going. Oh, this is weird. Ah, uh, okay. So our mapping is a bit fucked up. We've got our hand in there, and that's cool. Uh, I think we need to change our multiply to be nearest pixel to get rid of those... Uh, Nearest pixel, try that. Nope, still got them. Why we still got them? Hmm. Change these all to nearest pixel. All right, so one of them wasn't nearest pixel and that was what was causing our issues. But let's just turn instancing off for a second and let's see if we can get... a handle on how we need to be transforming this. So we've got this tiny little point here. I'm going to increase our point scale. And then I'm going to use our transform to see where we need to be. So transform. So translate. Point minus 0 0.2. minus 2.07 and then if we go up one point one six so if we do a, a math we should be able to find that zero to one so our R and our G correspond to our, um, our X and our Y axes. So red minus 2.07, 0 to 1 is going to be minus 2.07 to 2.07. And then green was a 1.16. 1.16. Then range green is going to be minus 1.16 to 1.16 and let's just uh, increase that Ease. so if we turn instancing back on this should basically line up with what I'm getting
Um, these two should basically look the same. Oh, not this one. This reorder and this render should basically look the same. And you know what? They do. They look basically exactly the same. Now, by the way, um, there are a lot better ways to get this than building that's from scratch. Like, um, David Braun has an awesome, well, that's an optical flow one, but um, we could do some optical flow here too. So, um, yeah, we might delve into that a bit later. But right now, I just want particles emitted from points that are active, like these points. Um, and these are going to be their starting positions. So that is the basic setup. So we've got now points in 3D space corresponding, well, in 2D space, sort of 3D space, corresponding to uh, where I touch. So I basically want anywhere I touch to be just like exploding out in points. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is to start using noise on these points. And so now we just got to think about how we do that. Um, so if we think for a second, <laughs> um, we're going to have some kind of feedback loop that resets the points and they have a lifetime of a certain amount. So like, uh, so all the points are going to move outwards in a random vector in a random direction. So we get, let's grab that. Let's get the noise. Let's make this same res as this. Honestly, we could down sample a lot. I feel like part of the reason that it's so heavy is because it's a high particle density. So we're going to just down sample this to like a quarter, maybe not a quarter, maybe a half. 720. Uh, hmm. Let me just see it at a quarter. So if we look over here, that's still a lot of particles. We can always try, because I imagine I want these to be like slightly bigger particles. Because I want to try like We'll start at this this resolution because then I can use circles if I want, and then we'll we'll see if there are bigger resolutions we can try. So 640 by 360, and we're gonna have this output just be the noise, and it's gonna be like that. And we do a feedback. with that over, um, what am I saying? This, add this, then we got a closed loop. So that's not exactly what we want. Oh, yes it is actually. And then we reset. Okay. All right. So we've got to bring this noise right down. The offset's going to be zero. The amplitude's going to be zero point zero zero one.
and then we're going to use a ham because I really want to hit it just once so like when I'm dragging my hand across I want every particle to just be like hit once and then turned off so they all jump straight into the feedback loop and they don't get held in the feedback loop. All right, let's try it the basic way and we need two feedback loops. So one feedback loop is going to do the movement and one feedback loop is going to do the alpha. So after this res, this is our second feedback loop. This is going to be a simple over. So you over you by you. So this is going to make sure that our particles sort of like stay visible. And then this second one is going to reset, reset their position. I don't know why we're getting reds in here. That's confusing. But um, we're going to do a level to make this fade away. So let me just see. Why? Oh, we need our uh, white texture. I can just do another one of these reorders. Let's just keep this up so you can see what's going on with the particles as I make these changes. So, there we are. So this feedback loop... Thank you. I appreciate you. Stop and buy. So this feedback loop, obviously, is it, this level is going to slowly fade away. That's quickly. It's quite quickly. Um, so we might go like 9.5. Let's try this. We're going to have to adjust these later, but let's just try 9.8 for now. So we can see this feedback loop fades away sort of slowly. Then we're going to put a threshold in. And so this threshold is going to control which particles are active or not. And we'll just bring it down. So these are all the particles that are going to stay active before disappearing. And we can do a little soften at the end there so it fades out and they fade out nicely. See, there we are. And we go a reorder here. So this. Oh, this is going to be difficult, actually, because we might not need this multiply right now. So we're going to put this in the reorder, too. This is going to go in the first slot of the reorder. got to be 640 by 360. This goes in here. And uh, input one is RGB, and then input two, which is our threshold, 
it's going to be our alpha. So, it's not quite working how I wanted it to. That's fine. Oh, okay. So we need to put this in here. Now. So now these, it's important, like this looks like very basic feedback stuff, but it's important because um, what we have is all these points with their positions. So I can start messing with their positions. And in fact, I can start using this. So these are their positions and then they're slowly going to start resetting or changing. So if I pulse this feedback, noise is going to be, if I pulse this feedback, I said, all right, so this is the particles like breaking up. And so you see now things are a lot more messed up when my hand brushes it, right? Now we're starting to get these kind of particle-y looks that I'm trying to achieve. And the longer I let this go, the more messed up it gets. And then when I reset this feedback loop, I'm now emitting particles from this point. But they're super out of control. So we want to start working on this to make sure that they're a lot more in control. And the longer I get the feedback loop, the longer it goes. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to reset the position of these particles based on this incoming uh, thing here. So, so we're going to use a mat. And we're basically going to reset the position of the particles with, um, so whenever my hand is there, so you see like they're already crazy out of whack. So now whenever my hand is there, they're going to be reset to their starting position. And that should make for a pretty good um, particle system. So, so we're going to go this over this, and then our mat out is going to be this channel. All right. So now, now we're getting sort of what I want, right? I'm passing my hand down and around and I'm getting particles coming, coming off my hand. So I think what we want to do is just set it so that we're, um, we're not resetting all the particles. We're just going to reset some of the particles. What we want to do is we want to motion detect and then use that as our thing. So only moving points are going to be reset. So we want to go with, let's do a base again. And in the base, we're going to do a little motion detection. So we want to put in a cache. And if you know anything about motion detection, you know what we're doing here. Cache output index is going to be minus one. Then we're going to run a difference operation. Difference between these two. So now you can see we're only getting the difference
we can make the effect more or less dramatic by using uh, this output index. If we go down to minus four, we get larger. So let's just go one. And I don't know if I love that little outline that we've got going on. So I'm just going to try, well, let's look what it looks like. So if we go into the out, oh, this is, we need to do another thing, which is put in a chroma key because we're targeting the alpha. So, so anything with a value less than 0 0.001. There we are. So that's good. Particle density is still pretty, pretty high. And so if I hold my hand, you sort of get this interesting thing happening, which I don't really like. So let's try and do that blur that I was going to do before. So I'm just going to put in a res. Going to bring this down like a quarter. And then blur it. So let me see that. Still getting some around the edges. Let's just bring this chroma key up. I'm looking for the hand to sort of disappear when it's not moving, or at least to a certain extent. That sort of works. I think it's better than before anyway. There's still like so many particles. I don't need nearly this many particles. So where is my... What resolution? 640? We can go even half that again. Let's go... Um, I still got to keep that ratio though, right? So... So let's divide that by two. Make this. Some bad programming, don't do this. But. All right. That's far less particles. But that's sort of what we want. I don't really want a lot of particles. All right, all the resolutions need to be the same. So, like, that's fine. But we need to, we need to be down resing in the right spot every time. So this, let's set up a global constant. I'm going to call this resolution. This is going to make things easier in the future too. I'm going to go Rx. We'll go res x and res y. And now we've got a 
We're going to down res. All right, and we're going 320 by 180. So let me do this. 320 by 180 is going to be our resolution. And this res is going to be chop reference. And this resolution is going to be... See, if I was doing tutorials, I would like have worked this out beforehand and wouldn't be like literally on the fly being like, oh, I've got to make sure this is organized and that the resolution of everything is the same. Otherwise, it's going to get messed up. Um, I don't need this multiply for now. This res is going to go into here. No problem, Jago. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. I honestly just had a good idea and thought I'd do it on stream because it's a bit better that Oh God, things are going not so well. So in here, I need to not be doing this down res. Leave that out. So all everything, all of you are nearest pixel. Good. Now this feedback loop, a Patreon or a Discord. I have neither of those things, unfortunately. Um, I have just this YouTube channel, and I try to stream. Well, I'm, I am trying. <laughs> I am trying to stream as much as possible. I haven't been very good about it in the past, but um, yeah, I just sort of try and do what. Uh, Whatever I'm working on, I'll try and stream, and hopefully you guys find it useful. All right, so I'm still mad about this. All right, this one's doing interpolate. Oh, can you go like I'm going to have to go through every operator and be like, are you interpolating pixels? Are you interpolating pixels? Nearest pixel nearest pixel. Now all of these nearest pixel interpolate pixel nearest nearest pixel nearest pixel oh my god oh my god this one's interpolating pixels nearest pixel <laughs> all right. hey and then all those errors go away as soon as I change everything to nearest pixel all right that's what I'm talking about Okay. So, let's add a little bit more fade to this. I took away all the fade from before, but now I want it back, so. Even more fade. Go zero point nine four. And it would be nice if we could go with like a soft fade out. You know how we can do that is we can go over here and then in our instancing if we have the alpha we might need to put color in so I'm just going to do a new uh, null and I'm going to call it color I'm just going to chuck this into it for now because I want the alpha channel from here but um, we might put other things into it when we want to put color in. so this is going to be the color Alpha is going to be the alpha. All right. Now, how's that? No, it still fades out really hard. Oh, it has to be alpha for everything. A, A, A. There we are. Now I get a nice fade out at the end.
Okay. Now, believe it or not, I eat, I want to admit less particles. Like, usually I'm the guy that's like, we need all the particles ever. But right now, I'm trying to like reduce the number of particles. I mean, obviously, the easiest way is going to be to reduce the resolution again. So let's do that again. Let's go half again. Let's go 320 divided by 2 is 160. And 180 divided by 2 is 90. And we, oh, straight in. So what we've got is like two feedback loops. One, we're going to call this motion detect. We just check in here, nearest pixel, nearest pixel. So this is basically our life parameter over here. And we're cutting it off at a certain point. Um, but what we can do is we can do certain operations to it. So what I want to do is a ramp and we're going to do a lookup because I want, I want there to be an initial bump in particle in, in this noise disruption followed by a reduction. If that makes sense. So, um, when it starts, I want the particles when they're first reset to have very high displacement, and then I want that to peter out as things continue. So, this is going to be our start. Well, no, no, this is going to be our start because this is going to be the brightest point. Well, and then we basically have what we want, right? <laughs> I don't even have to do a lookup. So this texture is basically exactly what we need. So if we just multiply this noise by this, we should have and then we just got to increase the amplitude of this noise so let's change this to 0 0.5 I'm going to use a lookup just because I want to have a little bit more control over this, you know? So right now, it's like I want to add even more intensity to that. So it's going to fade away really quickly. Bring this right down. But that is starting to look good. So uh, let's put this look up in here. And then once again, increase this amplitude. That's pretty good. My only issue is that uh, when I move fast, when I move my hand fast, things don't uh, fly away as, as fast as I'd want them to. Because it, it's fine when it's still, that's like perfect. That's how much I want them emitting. 
but then... Uh, maybe it's not so bad. Also, this works full body, like if I stand up. So they got like a very basic particle effect. Um, and one of the main things I want to be looking for is if I put this in a feedback loop, how does it look? Because I'm going to be wanting to like capture these particles in a feedback loop. So this is what we're getting. Pretty cool. But this is really low res. No, <laughs> not very low res. But the feedback loop is not so great. So let's do this in 4K. Let's hit save because I don't want to lose any of this. Reset this feedback loop. And I'm going to change this to 32 bit float. That's looking a bit better. Let's chuck down a level. Bring this down. Reasonably quickly. Check that out. I'm glad you enjoy the troubleshooting, Torrin. <laughs> I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> I was just like, why does this not work? But yeah, it is useful to see, oh, this is what's going wrong. This is what's going wrong. Wait, let me um, chuck this up on the screen so you can see what it looks like. Throwing this in and out. Uh, so let me switch to screen. All right. That's a cool effect. Uh, I might just switch back to a little bit of look dev. I still think I probably need to control the particles a bit more, but this is such a great start. 
we can add look to adding like um optical flow might be a cool thing um but right now what i would like to do is make these particles look slightly better let's put like a null in here let's blur let's not blob track let's Blur. Oop. Blur. And then we're going to add the blurred thing to the thing. blur does it actually I'm not gonna blur I'm gonna I gotta down res a heat before I blur it let's go like quarter how's that look it's looking a bit more blurry and honestly these point sprites can be a little bit bigger So if we chuck this in the feedback loop, that's cool. We like that. And then I just want to displace it with some noise. Keep this simple. Maybe we go like half res on this. Non-monochrome output is just noise. Increase the harmonics to basically as much as I can go. We go. And then we displace. But like only a little bit. No, I'm going to displace like to be like 0.1. How messed up is that? Okay, that could be cool. Try that. Oh, whoa. It's just so dense. And if we don't blur it. No, oh, I don't like that at all. Okay, no displace. I thought the blur was looking better. Oh, I got rid of the blur. I also feel like we need some kind of If we take uh, might use a select for this. If we select this. How does that look? And then we just blur the hell out of this. Maybe 
maybe a little less. Yeah, something like that. And then add. So if we add this over this, chuck that in there. I shouldn't be looking at this over too. That was my bad. Let's view it here. Wait, what? Oh, no wonder everything looked like shit. All right, wait, I've got to retry some things. Like, let's reset this feedback. Okay. This is funny because it's like really not my style. Like, we're very much in like, I don't know, some other kind of style right now. But I can retry this displace because I was displacing at really low resolution. Let's try this now. Not much better at high resolution. There's something interesting about it, but I think I'm going to like get interest from the background more than this. Looks cool when you stay in one spot for a while. Maybe just like a tiny bit of displacement. All right, something that could be cool is a little bit of optical flow. I have a little component here that does optical flow nicely. If I chuck it in here. Reset this. And get rid of this. Let's do it. Optical flow time. Uh, we're going to limit this. Oh, wait. Let's not do this math. That's usually, that's more for displacement. So, let's clamp this. And, and then we're going to add this and this. We're getting optical flow there, yep, and it's going to be way too much. So I'm going to go multiply. Oh, actually, we need to add this before that multiply, I think. Ah, uh, not multiply. I meant to say math. All right, that broke everything because I forgot to use this math. All right, now it seems to be having zero effect, so let's increase this. <laughs> Uh, 
Now it seems to be having a lot of an effect. All right, we're gonna have to find the perfect balance. Let's try 0, 05. Starts pushing them sideways. Uh, 0, 04. So you can see we're getting these uh, moving a lot more in the direction that I'm moving my hand in. So it likes, it's pulling them around, which is sort of cool. They look like fireworks more than anything. And then very like tiny movements when I'm here changes. I mean, it seems to be changing the direction of all. Oh, it is changing the direction of them all of them, isn't it? That's interesting. Because the pixels have moved. I wonder what happens if I... All right. Obviously, we want a little bit of this, but not nearly that much. Like, let me just try the big interaction. Off of that. I wonder what happens if we put this into here. I think that looks a bit more natural, actually. Oh, no, what we want to be doing is we want to be putting this into here. Then you're going to get, like, structures. Wait, this is going to look cool. <laughs> That's super cool. I like that. All right, I'm just going to make a copy of this noise because I'm going to start messing with it. And this is going to be the one. So I'm going to call this noise displace place v1. Yeah, I do like it. I like the rivulets. Um, I want to do a little bit of work on them though, because I can, I can make changes. So I want to change this to 4d noise. So it's instead of a three dimensional noise, it's now got four dimensions. Actually, I don't need it to be a 4d noise. I'm an idiot. I'm only using two dimensions here. Um, usually when I'm working in particles, I have to change all my noises to be four dimensional noises because they, um, if, if you want to have like a random movement that like the, the noise just morphing, you have to add a fourth dimension because otherwise it just looks like you're moving through a third dimension or a second dimension or something like that. So let's try animating this.
All right, this is very cool. And it would also be way better at 120 frames per second, so. I wonder if we bring the period like up a lot. Let's put it up 10. Yeah, then we're gonna get the more like, it's probably way too much. So let's go like five. Pretty cool. Maybe still even less, like four. And then I think we can last, make this last a little bit longer. So this threshold can be right down, not that right down. All right, that's very cool. And we could keep this feedback loop alive even slightly longer. Maybe like nine, nine. Or nine, nine, five even. It just makes these incredible structures. So fucking cool. I wonder if we... Add some color. What's that going to look like? I also wonder if these can be circles because the squares, I can see the squares when they're up close and I don't like them. So let's hit save on that. Let's try to make these into circles. Um, if we change this to constant, chuck this in. All right, circles are too big. It's probably slightly too small. I don't know, it actually looks pretty good. Damn. All right, let's go twice that size, let's go 0 0.4. Nah, too big. Split the diff.
And they're just right. Somehow that's just like so much better than the uh, squares. The thing about the squares is though, they're super efficient. So maybe color. Let's uh, do like a, a ramp. Let's see if I've got some color schemes saved on my phone somewhere. Chunk. This one might be cool. Let's go. Oh, uh, that color might be a little bit dark. We're going to have to see, but maybe not. Uh, what resolution are we at here? Oh, we're at 160 by 90, I forgot. Uh, so let's just keep this lined up. 160 by 90. And you know, the cool thing about like uh, having your own, uh, building these things from scratch should be a 3D structure. Yeah, it'd be cool if it was 3D. I don't know how to make it 3D though. I mean, actually I do know how to make it 3D. It could be very cool in 3D. I've never tried doing, I, I mostly focused on, on two-dimensional um, stuff, but 3D could work too. You just gotta find a different way of doing the trails. The trails don't work in, in 3D. All right, what was I gonna do? Displace this. Or a fake 3D. Yeah, fake 3D could be cool. 2.5D. I'll put just the noise. Uh, we're going to increase the harmonics. Something like that. Actually, I'm going to change this to mirror. I want like a pretty even distribution. And then we go. I'm very prepared for this to be like amazing, but also it might be like a lot worse than <laughs> the current one. So I need a reorder. Coming in here. No, this coming in here.
actually, no, I want to multiply, right? Multiply this by this. And then All right, let's chuck this in the color and go over to the color and go R, G, B. All right, I want to reset this because I don't know what's going to happen. Let's go color. That's still cool. Not mad at that. It's not quite as cool, I feel. We gotta bust this up, like. I just love the other one, like, a lot more, you know? I wonder if you uh, multiply that by that. This is probably going to be too much. Oh no, that works. There can be another cool effect that I like doing sometimes is if we like add a cache into the feedback loop. All right, two things. First one, adding a little bit of cache. Cache is cool because it adds basically an infinite delay in. So if we set the output index to minus 10 and then do a little crossfade between that and that, uh, we want it to be the other way around, that and that, put our cache in. We get an interesting effect. So this is without it. And then we add a little, wait, let me make this bigger. Cash is coming in like that. We add a tiny bit of this. It's not gonna do anything yet, but when I add this, it's gonna constantly keep emitting particles. So it's going to constantly keep emitting particles. Yeah, see, here we are. Now we get this, like, craziness. It sort of calms down after a while, but yeah, let's go maximum cash. Reset the feedback. All right, we got to reset it like this. Now... Quite an interesting effect. And luckily we can bring this in and out. So I could take it all the way out and have it act like it normally does. A 
little bit of the cash. even less, just like the tiniest bit. And then, on top of all this, we add some, actually this can fade away a little bit more now, can't it? Add a little bit of the LSD filter as made famous by our last artwork. Where is it? It's under filters, isn't it? Put this in here, and this in here. sort of ruins the particle effect to some extent. But then also to some extent it doesn't, so. And this one's cool because it fades away slowly. Probably adds in a little too much contrast there, though. Put the composite all the way up. Let's reset this. Maybe we'll put no cache in. Try this. Cool, cool. All right. I think I'm basically done with this for the night, maybe. That was um, I'm supposed to be heading out later, so I don't know. Well, it's really cool. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like super directional. Like, it's like when I point my hand that way. Yeah, the other is definitely more dark. This one's like light. But like when you point your hand a certain way, it sends all the particles out that way. See what I mean? They fire out in the direction that you sort of shoot. 
All right. I think we're done for the night. I feel like I've streamed for like five hours today, so that's pretty good. But we made some really good progress, designed some really cool things, and I really appreciate everybody who's on for the ride.